Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go. Merry Christmas, everyone! Report number 7421, Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Thursday, November 20th, 2003. Classic sighting on Wooded Main Road. Year of Encounter, 1998. Season, Summer. Month, July. Date, 3rd. State, Maine. County, Oxford County. Nearest town, Wilson's Mills, Maine. Nearest road, Route 16. Observed. My boyfriend and two sons, age 5 and 10, were camping in Upton, Maine. On July 3, 1998, we took a ride into Parmacini Lake. The road to get there is off Route 16 in Wilson's Mills, Maine. We drove around most of the day, stopped for a cookout on someone's lot, and then headed out in the early afternoon. It was before 4 p.m. We were riding in a truck, my friend driving and the two boys in the middle, and I was on the passenger side. We came out of what I would call a wooded area at the top of a small hill. The hill rounded a small corner and then straightened out at the bottom. The entire area on the right side was an open area at the bottom. The left side was wooded. There were no vehicles around there or anywhere for that matter. Just as we rounded, we could see at the very bottom of the slight downgrade, approximately 100 to 150 yards, we both saw it at the same time. He looked at me immediately and said, What did you just see? I looked at him and without even thinking and said, Saskatchewan! What we saw was something unimaginable. The creature was standing on two legs, was very tall, approximately seven feet, skinny, and was totally covered with long brown fur. What was amazing was this creature never even acknowledged that we were coming towards him in the truck. Although we were not close enough to hit it, it never acknowledged it. The other amazing thing was that its strides were huge. It took it probably three strides to cross the dirt road, which was wide enough for two vehicles. Its gait was very stoic. We got down to the bottom within seconds. We slowed right down almost to a stop and looked into the woods. There was nothing in there. My boyfriend wanted to stop, but I wouldn't let him because of the children. We also stopped discussing it at the time in fear of scaring the kids. There were no tracks on the ground. We intended to return the next day to see if we could track anything, but it rained really hard that night, so we figured any tracks were gone. I told this story to very few people because I know it's hard to believe. I did tell one of the foresters that worked where I did. This road we went on is gated and I was able to get a key from my employer. This is why I mentioned it to the forester. I was hoping maybe he had heard similar stories. The creature was on Bose Buck Mountain and headed towards Aziscohos Lake. Also in that area was an old gate near mile marker number 12. Also noticed, just the fact that this creature was walking and proceeded to cross the dirt road without acknowledging anything, just straight large strides, and then it was gone. Other witnesses, two adults, driving through the area and heading back to camp. Other stories, no. Time and conditions, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. It was a beautiful, clear summer day with a slight breeze. Environment, open hard, hardwood forest, mile marker number 12, an old gate. 
follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Bill D. This is a classic Sasquatch sighting and is representative of the majority of sightings made all across the country, including northern New England. Although many reports of this type will mention the animal taking a quick look in the direction of the witness, the lack of reaction to the approaching vehicle is not atypical behavior for an animal wishing to be non-confrontational. The avoidance of eye contact and rapid stride out of view is the most typical Sasquatch response to a human witness. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. Report number 56798, Class B. Submitted by witness on Tuesday, February 14th, 2017. Possible trackway found in the snow in Vaughn Woods State Park east of Dover. Year 2017. State, Maine. Observed. I was hiking in the woods doing occasional whoops and wood knocks to try to elicit a response. It felt so squatchy from the moment I got there, but I got no response to anything. I was about an hour into my trek and I see off the beaten path a series of footprints. The snow had stopped yesterday and I tell you these prints were fresh. I am thinking I just missed that squatch by a matter of minutes or hours. So close. Well, let me tell you what. These things were 12 inches long and the stride between steps was measured at 8 feet. The line of prints was straight, just like you see with other evidence of a Bigfoot trail. It was insane. There were no other prints around. I followed these about a quarter mile into the depths of the woods and off the beaten path. The snow was up past my knees at some points, but how could I stop following the epic trail? I could see some prints more clearly than others. I could see toe outlines and the heel in a few. I have pictures and videos to share with you. By the looks of the size of the prints and the distance in stride, this seems like an adult Sasquatch. These things were huge. The sun was setting and my phone was dying so to my dismay I had to turn around and get back to the path before dark. Otherwise I would have followed those tracks until they led me to whatever made them and we know what made those beasts. This is the best day ever. My first Bigfoot evidence and experience, and I couldn't be happier. There is literally nothing else this could be. It is an amazing and documented Bigfoot footprint trail. Also noticed, this happened just today, February 14, 2017. I documented the footprint trail with pictures and video. I have everything. Would love to send them to you. Other witnesses, solo. Time and conditions, 4.30 p.m. Sun was setting and light was bouncing through the trees. Snow was everywhere, quite a winter wonderland. Environment, Vaughn Woods State Park in South Berwick, Maine. The trails were in an area right along the Piscatua River. I had gone away from the river and up into the woods further before I saw the prints. The snow was fresh from yesterday and it took a lot to trudge through. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Jeff Shepard. I had the opportunity to correspond with the excited hiker two days after she submitted her report. We agreed that she would send me her pictures and video and then we would discuss her findings. True to her word, she sent five images and three short video clips showing the trackway she had found. Not having any type of measuring device, I asked her how she came to determine the size of the tracks and stride observed. She used a small flashlight 
to determine scale seen in one picture and she used her stride to approximately measure the stride of the trackway. She had been hiking in Vaughn Woods Memorial State Park which is a 160 acre state park in southwestern Maine. There is only about three miles of trails here that wind through a mixed growth forest along the Salmon Falls River. To the west, approximately four miles, is the city of Dover, New Hampshire. To the east, there is much more rural, undeveloped land, including water sources and forest. I did an independent site visit without the hiker four days after her finding. Unfortunately, between the time when the hiker found her trackway and the time I was able to visit, another winter storm had blanketed the region with 18 to 24 inches of snow. The area is a popular hiking destination with the local populace. Thankfully, people had been snowshoeing and had packed the trails down, making it easier to hike. While there, I did notice bounding tracks of deer as well as coyote. Other animals native to the region include rabbit, squirrel, fox, porcupine, and moose. Footprint pictures historically never do the, find the justice. My initial thought was that maybe the hiker had seen the bounding tracks of a fisher cat or a marten. I found an unusual track way coming down a ridge towards the river. The prints were 15 inches long, 7 inches wide at the toe, and 6 inches wide at the heel. I measured 53 inches from heel to toe and 68 inches from toe to toe. The prints were not staggered and were in a relatively straight line one behind the other. I could not discern any toe or heel marks as the prints had been filled in by the recent storm. After my visit, I talked to the hiker and she told me the tracks she found were approximately one and a half to two feet deep into the snow and were on a different trail than the one I was on, where I had seen tracks. She could see toe prints digging into the snow and heel strikes in several of the prints while following the trackway. She told me her fascination with Bigfoot began in college one day when she came across the show Finding Bigfoot. After watching it, she became interested in the phenomenon. She is incredibly excited as this is her first experience with what she feels is physical proof of Bigfoot existence. The hiker is a nurse at a local regional hospital. I found her to be honest, sincere, and a credible witness. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with you. Report number 13285 Class Alpha. Month October. State Vermont. Observed. My family and I went to Ludlow, Vermont for Columbus Day weekend since we enjoy the northeastern woods. We all enjoy observing the local flora and fauna in their natural settings and we often drive the back roads looking for deer, moose, bear, and whatever else we can spot. One evening we went moose spotting on Tyson Road. Since during a summer trip to the same area earlier we had observed eight moose in one evening. As we drove along Tyson Road, I saw a large bipedal form cross the road in two strides. I asked one of my daughters, did you see that? Tell me, what did you see? I purposely didn't say what I'd seen since I wanted to know if she'd seen what I'd seen. I wanted to be sure I had not imagined it. Very quickly, she said, I don't know what it was, but it was real big maybe eight feet tall, hairy, and crossed the road in two steps. She saw the same thing I did. It crossed the road about 50 feet ahead of us, and judging from the trees where it crossed the road, I'd say her height estimate is accurate, plus or minus 20 percent. My other daughter didn't see it since she was in the back seat and was looking out the side windows of the car. I still don't quite believe it but I know what bear, deer, and moose look like in natural settings since I've been hunting for 40 years. 
It wasn't anything I'd had ever seen in the woods. It walked across the road in two strides, was heavy built, covered in short, dark hair, and as stated previously, approximately eight feet tall. One more thing. The day before, we had driven the same area. Didn't see anything at all. No fauna at all, but we did hear some very odd vocalizations that sound very much like the recordings available on your website. Also notice, the day before, we had driven the same area. Didn't see anything at all. No fauna at all. But we did hear some very odd vocalizations that sound very much like the recordings available on your website. Other witnesses, there were three of us in the car, only two of us saw it cross the road. Other stories, I've been told that the locals just warn kids not to hang out there since strange things happen there sometimes. I don't know what strange things, so I'm not sure if it's relevant. Time and conditions, it was evening, but with the moon and the headlights of the car, we could see very clearly. Environment, at that point, the road is bordered by woods and swamp. Follow-up investigation report. <clears throat> I spoke to the witness by phone, and he impressed me as articulate and sincere. He emphasized that he might have thought he was imagining the experience had his daughter not been in the front seat with him and corroborated all of his perceptions. He added a few details to the submitted report. One, the figure turned its head toward the car as it crossed the road. Two, it resembled the figure in the Patterson film with the same pronounced arm swing except that it wasn't as heavily built. Three, its head seemed conical. Four, its visible nearer hand looked massive. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our swatch. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. Report number 49902 Class Bravo. Year 2015. State Vermont. Location details. Park rangers are trying to keep this quiet, but I've had reports of Bigfoots and tracks. The tracks I saw were on the Futures Trail above the first parking lot and below the power line at Mount Escutney State Park in Windsor, Vermont. Nearest town, Windsor, Vermont. Nearest road, Mount Escutney Parkway. Observed. I researched mountain lions in New Hampshire, but I was caring for my mother and hadn't got out since Christmas Day 2014. On May 24, 2015, I decided to just go for a walk, no research. I did a meet-up with someone who walked much faster than me. She left me at the power line. I was way downhill, but was determined to at least make it to the power line. I did, but when I turned back to go down to the car, I saw two huge prints near a tree by the trail. When I got to them, the hills were three to four inches deep in the soil and leaves. They touched and the toes went out <clears throat> and away from each other like a duck's feet. They seemed to be 15 inches long, but it was hard to tell with all the leaves, unevenness, grass, etc. I took photos and measurements. Even on a walk, I take a camera and tape measure. It was interesting as hiding by that tree the Futures Trail went right past the tree. Above was the power line and behind the tree was the park road so that it was an advantageous hunting spot as animals coming from six different directions could easily be hunted down. Going back to the car I saw two more tracks to the right of the trail. One was about 10 inches, the other seemed to be 15 inches but with a 10 inch track inside it. The toes were five inches across for the three toes that were embedded in the bank. The other toes were over the hardened trail. There was also a five by six inch parallelogram shape. I kick myself now as I didn't take a photo. Later I saw a knuckle walking gorilla on TV and thought 
that's what that was. It was a knuckle print and also was very deep. At the bottom, I asked the ranger to do a casting, and he said I could instead. So I bought plaster of Paris. It wasn't enough. I had to go back several days later. But it had rained. The casts are awful. There were too many leaves. The toes broke off, etc. The interesting part was that the park ranger acknowledged the report with a, yeah, we get lots of reports of Bigfoots, but we try to keep it on the down low. When I asked him about mountain lion sightings, he seemed scared and said, you think there are mountain lions up there? It was odd that Bigfoot was normal and mountain lions were strange. When I came back, I heard from someone else that this same ranger had been followed down the hill by something he nicknamed Roy. He was hoping it was a Bigfoot and not a lion. Part of his job is to clear the trails and make sure everyone is off the mountain. That night it got dark, and he was also helped off the mountain, though it always stayed the same distance behind him. Also noticed, the weirdest incident was that Bigfoot, Bigfoot reports seemed normal, but not lion sightings. I've collected a lion sighting from that mountain. Also, the park ranger named whatever followed him Roy, and he was hoping it was a Bigfoot and not a cat. Other witnesses, just me until I brought friends back to help carry the heavy plaster of Paris. By then, I had half filled in the larger pair of tracks by the tree. Other stories see above. Time and conditions, 11.30 a.m. Environment, wooded area on a trail between the power line and the Mount Escutney Parkway road. It was just before the curve in the trail going up to the power line. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Jeff Shepard. I conversed with the hiker over the phone for approximately one and a half hours. She was very straightforward, upbeat, and enjoyed talking about her hobby of mountain lion research that has led her to multiple sightings of what she feels are Bigfoot tracks. She is a 67-year-old retired librarian and is currently an artist, writer, and publisher. I found her to be sincere and credible. Her initial sighting of potential Bigfoot tracks on Mount Escutney in Windsor was just a hike for pleasure to unwind and enjoy nature as she had been taking care of her elderly mother. She had not been in the field for approximately five months from December 25th to May 24th. The tracks she found were 15 inches in length and sunk between two and four inches into the ground. They were by a tree at a strategic intersection where the trail she was on, a, on crosses a set of power lines and comes within 100 feet of the auto road that goes up the mountain. She feels this was the perfect location for something to be able to hunt from as it had a hidden view of anything traveling up or down the power lines, hiking trail, or auto road. On her way back to the parking lot, she also observed a second large print with a smaller 10-inch footprint inside of it. She also found what she feels was a knuckle print from a creature leaning over for support similar to what gorillas do. Wanting to make cash, she went to the ranger station where she spoke to the park ranger about what she had found and suggested he make a cast. He declined, and the hiker left due to not having enough casting material and returned a couple of days later. Due to poor weather conditions, her cast did not come out well and ended up breaking. The park ranger did acknowledge that there had been previous reports of Bigfoot activity, but they tried to keep it on the down low. The hiker thought it odd that the ranger was at ease with Bigfoot activity, but seemed quite concerned when she told him of mountain lion reports from the area. The ranger did have an incident where something shadowed him off of the mountain one day, just out of his sight. According to someone the hiker spoke with, they mentioned that the ranger hoped it was 
uh, it was a Bigfoot versus a mountain lion. The hiker had taken photographs of the prints and took measurements as she carries a camera and tape measure even when not researching mountain lions. She willingly shared her photographs with me and sent them in a timely manner. I had the opportunity to visit Mount Askutney on Saturday, July 30th, 2016, approximately 14 months after her discovery. I was able to easily find the location of where she found her footprints and agree that where they were would be quite advantageous to anyone wanting to view the power lines, hiking trail, and auto road. Unfortunately, too much time had passed and I could find no trace of any footprints. While there, the conditions were not ideal for footprints as the area is in the middle of a drought and there was a lot of leaf litter on the forest floor. I did find a couple of unusual tree manipulations that seemed odd and out of the ordinary. I have read other reports that attribute these types of manip manipulations to supposed Bigfoot activity. I hiked up the mountain approximately one and a half miles from the parking area. I was at to see the steam donkey an antique piece of logging equipment that had been abandoned on the mountain in the early 1900s. What I found unusual was the lack of sound in the forest. I did not see or hear any birds or animals during the two hours. I hiked and did not see another hiker. Upon leaving the mountain, I stopped at the ranger station and asked about any reports of Bigfoot activity in the area. The young man I spoke with said he knew of no reported activity but also suggested I come back when the park ranger was there as he would know more about the happenings of the park. Mount Escutney State Park has more than 3,000 acres of land and contains many species of both hardwood and softwood trees. It is supposed to be a great place to bird watch and has many animals including deer, moose, and bear. Due to its steep height, it also has one of the premier hang gliding sites in New England. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help.